Having never owned a dropper, I bought the KS E10 to see if it would make a substantial difference in my riding. The dropper comes with a switch and a cable holder. The switch is made of cheap feeling plastic. It really doesn't feel well made, but we'll see how it holds up over time. The included zip tie cable holder goes around the dropper post and holds a cable in whatever your desired position may be. At first glance, the construction quality of the dropper seems very sturdy and durable. Now one thing to keep in mind is when ordering the dropper is that it does come in different sizes. My bike required a 30.9 millimeter diameter. Installation of the dropper post is simple and straightforward. First, remove your old saddle and seat post. Once removed, install the dropper. Next, put on the dropper switch. There's a small nut and bolt that you must loosen or remove before you can slide the lever on the bars. Before sliding the lever on, remove your grips. Hopefully you have locking grips because they are simple to remove. Now slide the lever and adjust as needed. Once adjusted, tighten down the lever and reinstall the grip. Now that the switch is installed, we can route the cable. Fortunately, my bike came with some extra mounting points for a dropper. It's no big deal if your bike doesn't have these, but you might have to get a little creative. Now notice that I'm not fully tightening the zip ties yet. I want to wait until I've completely routed the cable before I completely tighten the zip ties. To install the cable on the dropper mechanism, simply slide the black bob in the top notch and pull down until the cable housing slides into its notch. You must ensure that your dropper post is in the full up position before doing this. Next, remove the saddle off of your old seat post. My old saddle was held in by two bolts, so I must loosen them in order to remove the saddle. Once loosened, the saddle should slide right off. Now loosen the single bolt on the dropper, slide in the saddle to your preference, and tighten down the bolt. With the cable routed and the seat post installed, we can now zip tie down everything completely. After installing the dropper, I noticed the actuation cable was slapping against my derailleur cable and making some noise. I applied some electrical tape on the cable in an effort to reduce the noise. Now that the dropper is installed, let's see it in action. When you want to activate the dropper, remain seated on your saddle and push on the dropper lever. Your body weight will force down the post. Once in the down position, release the actuator lever. This will leave the saddle in a low position and allow you more easily to maneuver your bike. Once you have completed a technical section and wish to return to maximum pedaling efficiency, stand up and push the dropper lever. One of the major downsides to this dropper is that it isn't internally routed. When I go to the low position, I have a substantial amount of slack on the cable. One time the cable got stuck on my crank arm, I will definitely have to get a little bit more creative with my cable routing. Other than that, I think this dropper post has been well worth the $100 that I paid for it. The dropper makes transitioning from climbs to downhills so much easier and efficient. I'm so sold on the dropper post, and I would say this is definitely worth checking out if you have the money. Thank you so much for taking the time out to watch this video. I hope that it was informative and helpful. If you like this content and want to see more like it, please like and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next video.